Hey there again, everybody. Back by, well, unpopular demand is another enthralling screen capture video from Mr. H. We're still talking MLA formatting, and in this case, we're talking uh, about internal or in-text citations. Last time you were with us, you learned how to do uh, proper works cited. Those citations would be for, say, a bibliography or a works cited page. What you also have to do, though, is give credit to authors and uh, source material inside your actual informational writing texts. Uh, so that's gonna be the focus of today. What I have created for you right here is an example paper uh, that's one walks you through all the rules so this would be a great source to come back to in my Google Classroom and look at if you ever have questions uh, and I also have a work cited uh, page that's a, a fictional fake sources silly stuff uh, but we'll use this uh, to reference. These are just like the MLA sources that you have on top of your note pages and in the coming days you will also make uh, a works cited page just like this. So the first thing we want to make sure uh, that we do is we always have to give credit to our source material. Uh, anything that's fact or anything that you learned or anything that you're using in informational text uh, that's not, say, a transition uh, or your own author's opinion needs to be sourced and needs to be given credit to. Even if it's something you kind of already know, you're not a qualified expert, so you still have to give credit to expert sources. So in my example here, uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure we give credit to this first idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to my fictional works cited page and we're going to pretend just for the sake of uh, today that that information came from this source right here. Uh, whenever you're making an internal citation, the first thing you'll always look for will be author's last name. Okay, so in this case, author's last name is my last name. So we'll scroll back up and inside this parentheses right here, we'll add in author's last name. And we'll say that this next direct quote here also came from uh, that source. One thing that will uh, look nicer is whenever you have the same source and in an in-text citation back to back like I do here, I have two holsters, you can actually get rid of or omit the one before it. What this says is that all of this information up until this point could or is, you know, either directly referenced or paraphrased from that source. So it's all from this particular sources material. So that will save you some parentheses and some in-text citations. If author's last name is not available, essentially what you do is you go to the next uh, possible uh, thing that you have. Uh, and often that's going to be titles. So down here I have two examples that just have titles uh, with MLA for in-text citations. So we'll come up to my fictional article here and we will pretend that this direct quote belongs here. We'll get rid of that period because we don't need it. Notice that articles from websites are in quotation marks, so make sure you always include those quotation marks. Uh, also notice that the punctuation, in this case a period, is on the outside. If you don't have an author's name and you don't have a title of an article, you should probably be really wary, weary of that site and uh, question its reliability. I have an example anyway. Uh, my first one here does not have an author, does not have a article title so it goes right to the group responsible or the name of the website so we're gonna use crummysite.net uh, for this source right here so we'll go ahead and paste that in as well uh, and that will be the uh, the next thing you include essentially you just go down the line until you run out of things that you can use for your in-text citation but trust me if you're getting past the group responsible or the name of the website it's really probably not a very good source and you should probably avoid using it uh, that seems pretty straightforward not too hard to follow, but sometimes things can get a little confusing. And in one case uh, that can be particularly confusing is if you have two different sources that have the same author or title. If you look in my Works Cited page, I have that example right here. I have two articles with the same exact title, and they're from two different sources. So what you're going to do uh, is you're going to give the article title to whichever source comes first in your Works Cited page. So this one by alpha order. Uh, would come first. So this one gets to claim MLA citations for in MLA for in-text citations. So if we scroll back up to my example paper, we'll plug that in right here. Okay, we don't need this extra period, so we'll pull that out. Um, but now what do we do when we get down to our next one? Because this information right here we're going to say is from the different source that has the exact same article title. What you're actually going to do uh, is you're going to go back and you're going to pull both the title and, sorry, we're on this one, both the title and you're going to add in 
in this case the group responsible or the website. So to differentiate them and to make sure that we know that these are in fact two different sources, we're going to include the article title. Uh, we're also going to have a comma there. And then we're going to include the uh, group responsible or the website name, which in this case is the Writing Help Center at the University of Holscher. So let's copy that in. And so again, that will be followed or preceded by a comma. And now that's your complete citation. So we know that these are different because this one's just the title, this one's the title, and the next thing available in the citation, which is the group responsible. Uh, some key things you don't want to forget about is punctuation. You will have two parentheses to show uh, your in-text citation. Make sure that you don't have any punctuation before it, but you actually have it following. And in most cases, it's going to be a period. Rarely would you need an exclamation point or a question mark in technical writing. Uh, so it's most likely going to be a period. Uh, the other thing that can happen uh, that can be confusing for kids is sometimes you'll have a sentence that you've synthesized and, and you're paraphrasing and you've combined two sources information together. So what you'll do with that one uh, is you'll include both sources with a uh, oops, with a semicolon in between. Okay, So we'll take Holscher as the first source that that information came from and we'll also say that it's from this particular uh, source as well. So we'll go in and we will paste that after the semicolon. And we can get rid of that period. So again, if you have one paraphrased or synthesized sentence and you have two sources that that information came from, that's how you would show that. Okay. Uh, finally, the other important thing that you got to know is that if ever you're copying an author's words word for word, and I watched you do your research and most of you did this, you got to put quotation marks around the part that you're directly referencing. We call these a direct reference. It's when you're taking someone else's word, word for word. You can't forget to uh, do that. Uh, otherwise, you're not giving credit where credit's due. Okay, So make sure you leave those quotes in there, put those quotes around there, and also don't forget to source it. Even if you paraphrase information or put it in your own words, it doesn't mean you can just write whatever you want and not give credit. Uh, if you do that, uh, it's technically plagiarism. We call these indirect quotes, and you still have to give credit where credit's due. So we'll pretend that this one uh, is not from this one, but we'll say it's from promesite.net. Again, you cannot forget to include uh, both the in-text citation uh, for paraphrased or summarized items. It's necessary for both. Okay. Uh, I hope you learned a ton about in-text citations. I hope you're really excited about it. Uh, and please be aware of how awesome this video was and how much you learned before you go and you thumbs down my video on YouTube. Uh, thanks for watching.